Hi YouTube, uh, welcome back, my name is Sean Connors and this is Outsiders and today's RPG review is actually on one of my own games. Um, it's not one of my games that got published and it's not one of my games that's received any popular acclaims. But I think it's long overdue um, to be brought back, I think the marketplace is right for it now and um, I want to share it with you. And equally as well, if this is something that appeals to you, and it's something you really like, and you're honestly thinking, you know what, Sean, this is good, and I really fancy this, I really want this, then you can easily get my email address, drop me a line, and um, you know what, once I've revised it, I'll send you a copy. I can't be any fairer than that, free charge. So, what is it? It's called The Outsiders, because some of you have asked, where did The Outsiders 68, where does that come from, What? where did that name come from? Obviously, 68 refers to my, my date of birth, and... The Outsiders is a name that was given to a system that I created some years ago now. So this is 20 years old, this system, so it's a throwback system. But it has merit, particularly in this marketplace right now, and there are some things about it that make it stand out to be very unique. I think it's important to understand that what I'll probably do is do a campaign review program for The Outsiders World and give an overview of it, which I'll try to keep very short, but just to give a flavour. But I designed the system off that campaign world. And to give you a tiny bit of flavour about it, the, the Outsiders world is as a pretense, and this is long before any campaigns came out, is a world where all the Dark Folk creatures have risen up. This is things like orcs, trolls, giants, um, goblins, kobolds, that sort of thing, have risen up en masse and destroyed their oppressors, i.e. the humans, the dwarves, the elves, the halflings, etc. Destroyed them, brought them back. To the point now, many years later, where, as far as most of the Dark Folk are concerned, these creatures are now myth. There's none of them left. However, there is a pocket of resistance left. A small, tiny pocket of resistance. And that, the characters have been referred to as the Outsiders. And that is where the title comes from. And I'm going to explain more about that in the campaign programme. Um, but the system is built off the pretense that when you break down a, a, a role-play system, effectively, no matter what class, irrespective of what type of system it is, if it's got classes, there can be multitude of classes, particularly in high fantasy I'm referring to here, but really there are only really three choices that you have, or a combination of the three choices, which is magic, stealth, and combat. So that's, that's what I've built up. It's a path for role-playing, so the idea is that the players get a certain amount of experience points from adolescence, which they spend on the skills that you would have picked up when you were younger, and then they have points that uh, through their character that they develop by taking a path, and that path opens up skills that you can't normally get access to. It is possible within the system, depending on how lucky you are at the beginning, um, to maybe enter two paths and have points left over to buy other skills, so you've got quite a diverse character. So you can see through the three paths that you can sort of create a character in your own image, which I really liked, and I, I still feel that has a lot of mileage, particularly in fantasy games. It's a levelless system, and as I say, it's classless, so that's the things. Um, what separates it? Well, it was originally built back 20 odd years ago, so you've got to imagine it's a bit more abstract, so it's a combat system, is a bit more toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so it doesn't have the appeal, the crunch of some of the more modern systems. It's an area of the game that would need to be developed, but I don't think it would take a lot of my time to do that. But one thing it does have that's very unique in the combat aspect of the game is the initiative system, which is even more unique than the one that I've, I've recently reviewed, 3rd edition, because in my initiative system, it's based on the person and the weapon chosen, and it's ongoing. So there isn't a, a set round that everybody gets to react in. So it might be possible that somebody wielding a dagger gets two or three attempts in before somebody who's using a two-handed sword, which is very fair, very realistic, but of course once that two-handed sword hits you, boy, you're in trouble. So you better have done what you needed to do. And I really like that, and that system to me really was fun. And it also did something very well because of it, which was it meant that somebody who was, say, dual wielding meant that you could see where their initiative went for their op, their main hand and their off hand, and that really made a lot of sense, and it really felt really good, and I'm sure there's something in that, to be honest, in this system. So, with the tweak, I think the combat system, yeah, it's fairly unique, I've never seen it done before. Um, the paths of the system are very simply, that the reason it's called a path system is that there are things like this one here, just probably don't know how well you can see it, but it's effectively, it's like a flowchart, big thing about flowcharts, haven't I? But... The idea is, is that you there are certain key skills that you have to have before you can move on to others. Um, but there's still flexibility, so the paths allow you to circumnavigate round. 
Um, the system itself has a Cthulhu-esque style to it in terms of you get a skill that you can develop. So we'll take one of the examples here, search skill. And the maximum amount of ranks that you can have in it is 12. Um, and obviously each rank costs you a set amount of experience points to actually gain. So obviously you can imagine that as your characters go up in levels, um, every time you get awarded any experience, sorry, when your characters go up and get experience points, every time you go up and get some, you can um, spend that experience points on skills you currently have or build, buy towards the next ones. So that, that was the idea. So that worked very, very well. And I think that worked very nicely indeed. Now, you tend to find that this system created some pretty good characters straight off the bat, but you needed them because of the world that you're in. And that's quite deliberate, to be honest with you. The other major aspect of this system that really, really sets it apart from anything else, it's got one of the most simplest magic systems, I think, ever in the history of magic systems, yet it is still the most diverse, it's unlimited. And that, that sounds like impossible. So you think to yourself, how, how can that be, Sean? How do you do that? Well, my particular magic system um, used what's called styles of magic. There was runes. Uh, magic users buy runes that they have. Some of these runes can be used to create uh, and make magical items. So if you have the rune, um, you can potentially make it permanent by investing some of yourself into that item. By giving up some of your magic you invested in so it's not unlimited so if you've got you know the rune of uh, I don't know uh, sharpness so you want to improve a weapon you can put that on a weapon but by doing so you invest some of yourself in it and then that bit can never be given back until much much later so you, you, you sort of you give up something by making magical items obviously it's easy to make scrolls and potions because they're going to be used more readily for you to return those points to you so that's the idea. There's six styles to magic. So, for example, create, perceive, transform, destroy, move, and control. And through those styles, you create any spell. So let's say you had a, a, a fire rune was one of your one of your specialities. Well, first of all, you could create fire in your hand, but without any control, you're likely to burn yourself. But that would just give you a, a heat source, possibly, or a, a light source, depending on how you wanted to control it. The other thing, of course, if you move that source, it's fireball. So you can see very quickly that it's a descriptive magical system that was a lot of fun actually. Players had a lot of fun with it. And those are the things that made it really, really stand out for, for my money. Um, I wouldn't say it was totally rules light um, because there are some really unique aspects of this game. The other thing is that it's uh, very the combat is very gritty and quite realistic in terms of, although it might be toe-to-toe, -to -toe, characters are far more likely to die through infection uh, without the proper support and help than they are through the w the wounds might kill you but the infections probably would and the simple s things about this system is it's a, a simple one roll will often accomplish what you need to so for example there's a combat chart and uh, as I say everything's out of 12 so if you've got an offensive skill of say for example in this case 9 and someone's got 4 you've only got to roll above a 2 on a d6 2 or better and you have, you've got through their defence. The more that you get over the roll, the more damage extra that you do. And wounds, generally most characters have wounds in the range of, probably start from the range of about between 9 and 15. So you can see it is incredibly gritty and it doesn't really improve much over time, a tiny bit maybe, if you're prepared to develop experience points into it, but not by a great deal. So in all, that is the Outsiders system, uh, originally known as Thieves' Tongue, became known as the Outsiders, and it's a system that I'm going to be bringing back. And that's why I very, very quickly today wanted to review it for your, well, for you really, to make some feedback on it. Now, as you know in my programme, I always give my systems that I review a mark out of four. I'd love to stand here and say, you know what, this is a four. It, it's not. It's unrefined. It needs a lot of work still for it to be of the quality that uh, players would appreciate and a marketplace needs. Um, does it have some merits? I think it does. Yeah, I think it's got some strong merits. I think there are some weaknesses. I think the combat system needs to be tweaked to make it more appealing to today's audience, definitely. Um, I don't think abstract is necessarily bad, but toe-to-toe -to -toe really doesn't give any options, so there needs to be more, more options there. So with all that in mind, what am I going to score it? Well, it's not going to get a 4. It can't get a 3. I don't think it deserves a 2. I think that wouldn't be fair for really something that is fairly unique in some ways. So I'm going to give it 2.5 with scope to grow. I think I might come back and revisit this review at a later stage and see if I can have improved it a little bit. And um, well, I suppose the proof will be in the well, proof will be in the eating, and possibly for those people who are interested, for those people who actually get it. 
Anyway, my name's been Sean Connors. This has been Outsiders, and this was Outsiders. Happy gaming, and until next time, take care.